We all know Australia is full of dangerous animals. That's just the way it goes. But there are some that are so dangerous they make the average Australian animals look cute and cuddly by comparison. These are the 20 most dangerous animals in Australia. Number 20. The Eastern Brown Snake We'll begin this video by talking about a creature that everyone can agree is dangerous, a venomous snake. Sadly though for Australia, they're honestly a bit infamous for having a whole series of snakes that are amongst the most deadly around. Starting that list off, we have the Eastern Brown Snake. Weirdly though, it's also known as the Common Brown Snake. But why? Is brown just so common that you want to lump in this snake with all the rest? And what about the brown snakes that aren't venomous? What did this snake do to deserve branding above all others? This is indeed a very dangerous and venomous snake though, and it lives both in Australia and Papua New Guinea. One thing that definitely makes it menacing is that it can be over 7 feet in length, thus making it longer than a tall adult. But what really makes them dangerous to Australians is the fact that these snakes are infamous for living in and thriving in areas that are close to people. And that's because one of their most desired prey is the house mouse. They need to be near urban areas to get their food, and that means that while humans aren't exactly on the menu, they are within biting range should they not be careful. Oh, and its venom is also so powerful that it's considered one of the deadliest in the world. That's a venomous snake that can easily kill people living around areas that people are popular in, and it's not a good combination. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Don't let the fact that they're kind of cute fool you. Kangaroos are actually far more dangerous than you may realize. They have very strong hind legs, which gifts them with a truly lethal kick. They also have long claws that can do some serious damage. A kick from a kangaroo has been known to break human bones, and while they don't tend to attack humans, if provoked, they will defend themselves. As always, comment down below with the hashtag sweet topic and let us know your opinion in relation relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Short Tail Stingray now, I'll be talking about the main stingray family a bit later in this video, but for now I want to cover one of the biggest stingrays that you can personally find off the coast of Australia, the short tail stingray. Now, I know there's a big creature with the name short in its title. Life is just full of ironies, isn't it? But how big does this particular stingray get? Well, how about being 7 feet and about 800 pounds? Is that big enough for you? The short tail stingray is not aggressive, thank goodness, but it is capable of inflicting a lethal wound with its long and venomous sting. This is why a lot of people know to be wary around the waters that it's in, and if they do see it, they keep their distance. Oh, and here's another interesting thing to note. It's not the fastest creature in the water, and it's known to be rather slow in fact. But if it wants to, it can move the water in such a way that it'll create a bang sound before it's propelled forward. That's a pretty cool trick if I should say so myself. Number 18. The Inland Taipan now, if you can't tell, there are a lot of snakes in Australia, and that only makes things worse when you realize how deadly some of them are, like the Inland Taipan. The Inland Taipan has a very curious history with mankind, but in the modern day it's considered by most to be one of, if not the deadliest snake in the world because of its venom. So yeah, now you know what not to interact with in the outback. However, there is a twist in this tale, if you'll hear me out, because you might believe that the reason for its deadliest moniker is because of how many people it's bitten and killed over the years, but that's not really the case. Rather, the amount of venom it secretes and the effects that it has on people and mice when put into their system. So basically, it's the deadliest because of how bad its venom could potentially be on the body of its victim. 
Apparently, this snake has enough venom in its body to kill 100 grown men just for one snake. Plus, if untreated, a bite from one could result in death in less than 45 minutes. And that means if you were to encounter one in, say, the outback, away from all kinds of help, well, you'd probably be screwed. The first local and general symptoms of a bite will be pain and variable nonspecific effects, which could include headache, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, dizziness, collapse, or convulsions leading to major organ effects like neurotoxicity and a whole bunch of other things that I can't really pronounce. And we end it all with kidney failure and finally death. That's right, it's a lovely snake, don't you think? Makes you just want to take it home and rub on it and pet it and love it all weekend long until it kills you. Number 17. Sydney Funnel Web Spider And now we get into a part of the list that I'm honestly pretty upset about. But why? Well, it's because we hate spiders. Any of you out there who love them, you may just be evil. What's more, it isn't only a spider that I'm going to be talking about. That's because Australia is sadly full of them and the ones that have the ability to kill people should they want to. Let's be honest, they're spiders. Killing is in their nature. The Sydney Funnel Web Spider is one that Aussies particularly have to be on watch for, for two reasons in particular. First, the spider isn't that big, and at times can only be two inches long, so it's very easy to miss if you're not paying attention. Secondly, it has a bite that'll kill you if not treated quickly. Oops! Further proving the earlier point that the venom is almost perfectly suited to kill humans and primates, but not other mammals. It's almost as if they were simply bred to kill us. Number 16. Dingo more than likely, you expected this one to be on the list, right? At first glance, the dingo may just look like a regular dog. However, it's a wild one and should be approached with caution. In fact, the dingo have become rather infamous over the years for what they've done to people and animals, so you've been warned. Dingoes are a breed of dog that live in the outback of Australia, the central area of the country known for its heat and desert areas. This is the spot that makes Australia uninhabitable to most people, and thus the coastline is filled with cities and such. Think the dingo cares about that one little bit? Well, no, it doesn't. They're able to survive because their bodies have adapted to the climate and are able to be both agile and last a long time in a chase. thus not tiring out due to dehydration or other factors that would affect humans very easily. If you need further proof of their hunting skills, they go after kangaroos and actually win. They also eat birds, reptiles, fish, crabs, frogs, insects, and seeds. Not surprisingly, they also hunt in packs, and they actually like to keep it all in the family. A mated pair will lead the charge, and their pups will be in close pursuit, which is adorable in certain ways, but also quite terrifying because it means there are potentially a family of killers coming after you. There are a lot of legends about dingoes due to their wild natures, but funnily enough, dingo attacks on humans are extremely rare, and local people know to keep away from them, and they do. Number 15. Saltwater Crocodile now, it shouldn't be too surprising that there are crocodiles in Australia. After all, they have rivers, and crocs just love to live in rivers. And believe it or not, Australia has even been famous over the years for having monster-sized crocs in their rivers named Brutus and Dominator. And people actually love to go and see them. However, if you're asking for a more general type of croc that Australians know to fear, that would be the saltwater crocodile. But why? Well, it's because it just so happens to be the biggest crocodile species on the planet, and by a good margin. On average, these things can get up to 17 feet in length and be about a thousand pounds, more than enough to kill anyone. That's just the small ones, though, as many have been caught and recorded to be over 20 feet long and weigh a ton. That's a true monster, and there are some unconfirmed reports that they can even get over 23 feet in length. 
What really makes crocodiles like these so dangerous though, especially in places like Australia, is that they can very easily blend into the waters of a river or even the ocean they're in. Remember, crocodiles are ambush predators, so what they prefer to do is sneak up on a foe and then snap at them with such incredible speed and power. The result most times is a meal for the crocodile. So even if you do come across a small 17-footer, do us all a favor and just back away very slowly. Number 14. Blue Bottles Blue bottles are siphonophores, a weird group of colonial jellyfish. Rather than being a single organism like the jellyfish, we commonly recognize siphonophores as actually being made up of several colony members called zooids. Now, you've heard of the Portuguese man of war. This is the same kind of creature, and they can be a problem in Australia, because these creatures travel in groups called armadas. Yes, that's a great name for a group of things and that leaves them strewn all over the beaches and the immediate waters. When these organisms are stranded, there's just one rule to avoid a nasty sting. Do not touch them. They can deliver such painful stings that long after the organism has died, you still feel it. You have been warned. Keep your hands to yourself. Number 13. Blue Ringed Octopus now we'll head back into the ocean for a bit and talk about an octopus that's known to make Australian waters its home, the blue-ringed octopus. But what makes this thing so deadly? Well, a few things actually, but the biggest one is that it just so happens to wield one of the deadliest toxins in history, the tetrodotoxin. Now, if that sounds familiar, that would be because it's the same thing that both the pufferfish and the poison dart frog have. You know, two of the most deadly creatures in the entire world. But wait, there's more. It's not just the toxin that makes it deadly, though that obviously helps. Rather, the blue-ringed octopus, not unlike several other octopus species are known for their camouflage abilities, to the extent that they'll change their colors and even shapes at times to resemble other things and blend in so that predators don't come after them. As John Oliver once said, octopuses are awesome. No, he really did, and he did a bit on octopuses. Getting back to the camouflage, that means that you can find yourself right next to one and not even know it until it's too late. That's when you become accidentally stung by it. Well, you better hope there's an antidote nearby, because it doesn't help that unlike certain other species, the blue-ringed octopus isn't naturally large. So you've got a small creature, that can blend in well, and if you provoke it, you could get filled with arguably the most deadly toxin around. I am never going swimming in the Australian waters, ever. Number 12. Great White Shark now everyone, you know the tune. Go ahead, play the Jaws theme in your head. Out of all the creatures in the ocean, the great white shark is by and large the most feared, even more so than creatures that have deadly toxins, because at least those can be cured. However, if you're getting ravaged by a great white shark, then I'm sorry, there ain't no fixing that. Most people picture great white sharks as massive behemoths, and many times they're right to picture them that big. Sure, the average for them is only about 15 feet long, give or take, which is over double the size of a very tall human, but they can grow to be way bigger than that. I'm talking like 20 feet in length and weigh over 5,000 pounds. There are actually records for great white sharks that show them next to the fishermen that caught them, and those people look tiny. It's obvious why the great white is on the list. It's an apex predator, and no one attacks this shark outside of maybe killer whales, and that means that they can lurk in any waters they want and attack anything that they want without consequence. To the extent that they'll surge from under their prey, grab them, fly into the air, and then slam them into the ocean's surface to stun them before devouring them. Oh, and they also have rows of teeth that are so sharp they can rend just about anything, including humans. When people think of shark attacks, they always think of the Great White, and it's not hard to see why. Number 11. Honeybee 
Surprised to see such a basic creature on this list? Well, so am I, to be frank. Because given the creatures that I've talked about already, and the ones yet to come, the honeybee is a bit basic. But just because something's basic doesn't mean it's not deadly or worth talking about, because believe it or not, honeybees aren't native to Australia. They were brought over to the land in order to help ensure that flowers and fruits and other things could thrive due to the bees being perfect pollinators. Obviously, the bees are the ones who can sting, and the last thing you want to do is disturb a hive. So be smart. Get it? Be smart? <laughs> <laughs> and you should be fine, or be an idiot and get stung constantly and regret it later. Number 10. Arukanji now, real talk here, I probably mangled that pronunciation, and probably will again, so I'm just gonna let you know right now that I recognize that. You don't have to tell me about it in the comments below. You know you did something bad if you've got a syndrome named after you. Getting named for something means that you have your name in the history books, but there are bad reasons to be remembered as well. This is a kind of sea jelly, and it's the first of a certain group that does indeed have stingers that can cause what is known as Irukanji syndrome, but I'll get to that. What makes this particular jelly unique is that they're both the smallest and one of the most venomous of all jellyfish in the world. They're as large as one cubic centimeter, and yet they have the ability to seriously mess you up. Irukanji syndrome induces excruciating muscle cramps in the arms and legs, severe pain in the back and the kidneys, a burning sensation of the skin and the face, along with headaches, nausea, restlessness, sweating, vomiting, an increase in heart rate and blood pressure, and psychological phenomena such as the feeling of impending doom. So in the end, it's pretty bad. Number 9. Bull Shark now wait a second, you say. Why is the bull shark ahead of the great white? It's a very fair question, and it's one that I certainly intend to answer. The simple answer is that while the great white is the great white, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most deadly shark around. It does a lot of damage. However, if you're looking for the top killer in terms of attacks on humans, that would actually be the bull shark. And I do mean it. With over 27% of their attacks on humans being fatal, that puts the bull shark above the stats of the great white, and it's probably not what you expected. But wait, it gets even worse. You see, the bull shark visually resembles other sharks, and as a result of that, their attack numbers and their fatalities could be much higher than originally calculated. Now again, likely not what you would expect, but guess what? There's even more to fear from this shark than you think. Because while Australia is a place that it calls home, it doesn't necessarily mean that it calls the ocean around the country or the continent home. Because bull sharks are one of the few sharks that aren't exactly afraid to live in rivers. You better believe it. There have been multiple cases of these sharks taking a hike on rivers and going way inland, even to the degree of being being 700 miles away from the nearest ocean. Just imagine being on a nice cozy river down under, and then all of the sudden one of these bull sharks appears next to you. You'd probably freak out just like I would. Number 8. Redback Spiders now we get back to spiders, and this time around I'm talking about the redback spider. Though they look like the infamous Black Widow, they actually aren't. They're close to them in looks, but they're far from them otherwise. The redback spider favors proximity to human habitation, with webs being built in dry and sheltered sites, such as among rocks and logs, shrubs and junk piles, sheds or even in your toilet. That means that in Australia, they're likely going to be close by people, and thus causes them problems. Oh, and there's also proof of this. Over 250 cases of these bites happen per year to Australians, and they need antivenom to treat it. Thankfully, no deaths have ever been recorded, and they prefer not to go after human flesh. But would you really want to take that risk? I mean... Really? Knowing that you could be seriously affected by one of those bites? Number 7. Common Death Adder 
Now seriously, what is it with some of these names? What is a common death? Are there common types of death? But a simple common death? That's disrespectful. Common death adders should have better respect put into their names, given that they can seriously kill people. Let's make some changes happen, Australia. Get a petition going. Now, the common death adder is yet another snake that's never afraid to get physical with a person and come out on top. And if you want some stats to prove it, well, before the invention of its particular anti-venom, about 60% of all bites by the poorly named snake were fatal. 60%, meaning that back then you had a two-thirds chance of dying if you got bit by them. Now granted, that's all changed now, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be on your toes around them. Thankfully, the common death adder is easy to recognize via their triangular shaped head. Number 6. Stonefish One look at the stonefish and you'll not even know what to say, but it probably has to go along the lines of, man, that fish looks really weird. And you would be absolutely right. Stonefish will not be getting any awards for the prettiest fish. However, if you were to gauge it on its deadliness, especially in the realms of Australia, you'd find yourself in the top tier. Now, there are those who say that the stonefish is the world's most venomous fish, and it's not hard to see why, given that it has dorsal spines that are literally pumping with venom ready to inject into predators or prey or idiots like human beings who happen to get too close. Now, if you're looking for a timer, if a human was to be injected by the stonefish, it would take, oh, just roughly an hour for them to die. That's not a whole lot of time, especially if you're swimming in deep waters and you get stung and you need to get to a place with an antidote and then your boat engines run out of gas. Are you expecting it to get worse? Well, good, you're learning, because as you're trying to get that antidote and that engine to start, you're going to be in agonizing pain. There are stories of people who got stung, and by their own words, they wanted to just get rid of that part of the body, i.e. chop the limb off in order to be free of the pain, because chopping a limb off would feel better than the sting that you got from the fish. Now, thankfully, I don't think that any of their requests were granted, but still, you don't want to be next for that kind of story, so be on the lookout for the stonefish as you swim in the Australian waters. Number 5. Goanna Monitor lizards are very popular in Australia, always have been, and always will be. But in terms of the ones that I'm talking about, that would be a group of monitor lizards known as Goanna. This particular lizard is known to be large and bulky, over 8 feet long with very sharp claws and teeth, though ironically some never grow beyond 8 inches. Oh well, some lizards just have all the luck. The reason that people in Australia are warned to leave them alone is that despite them preferring to stay away from humans, they don't always do that, especially when it comes to getting their food. What's more, there's actually a debate about whether or not they're venomous, and that's based on very powerful bleeding that happens when they bite. Plus, if you're fighting the eight-footers, you have to deal with big teeth and tails and a tail whip that can really hurt you in the end. Number 4. The Mulga Snake Native to northern, western, and central Australia, the mulga snake is yet another serpent, but not the last one you'll see on this list, that Australians have to look out for. And yes, this is one that is just as bad as the others in certain ways. For example, in terms of length, they can get up to 10 feet long, and just as bad, they are not one of those silly string snakes. This one actually has girth and that rarely goes well for us when a snake is both long and wide. Now there is some good news and bad news going on in regards to what the snake can do to humans. The bad news? The snake accounts for 4% of identified snake bite attacks on Australians between 2005 and 2015. And obviously those were just identified bites, and thus that number could be much higher. So thus, there are a great deal of these snakes around. The good news, though, is that no deaths have been recorded with those bites. The reason for this is that after a particularly bad death by a bite victim, Australia wanted to make sure that they had the antivenom needed to save the people, and they made it happen. So good for them. 
The bad news on that though, it doesn't mean that it can't kill you. Even more so, the Mulga snake is very aggressive and is actually willing to bite you repeatedly should the need arise. And that just happens to mean more venom for you to have to deal with and then hopefully be given the antivenom for. Number 3. Stingray the Stingray is a creature that you definitely know about, even if it's for the bad reasons. These are creatures that are known to be rather majestic in the waters they live in, as they seem to float across the water and are quite agile. What you may not realize, though, is the sheer versatility of these creatures, such as the fact that they're willing to live in coastal waters like Australia, or in deep waters, or even in rivers, depending on the species. On that note, there are actually 220 species of stingray in the world right now. That's a whole lot. And while we don't know how many live in or near Australia, if it's even a handful, that means that there are plenty of things for Australians to worry about. After all, stingrays are infamous for their, wait for it, stingers. Yep, those things on the end of their tails are what they use to ward off predators and get their prey. And sadly, there have been plenty of people who have gotten too close to them and gotten killed, which includes the late great Steve Irwin. The twist on everything, though, is that despite their sheer numbers, many of them are on the endangered species list because they're being overfished. So not only do humans need to keep their distance from them for safety concerns, they need to stay away from them for ecological concerns as well. These creatures deserve to live, and we need to let them. Number 2. Box Jellyfish there are a lot of creatures that you could very easily argue are the most dangerous in all of Australia and its waters, but there is one particular creature that's an absolute terror and has caused so much death that they went to great lengths to try and prevent massive deaths by it again. That is, of course, the deadly and infamous box jellyfish. To be clear, no, this jellyfish is not shaped like a box. If it was, that would raise all kinds of questions, but thankfully it's not the case. The reasons for this is like many other jellyfishes, the box jelly has a sting that can absolutely hurt and kill you. And in fact, five minutes is all you're going to have to get the antidote before the effects take hold and then take your life. And sadly, there have been times that people have not been able to get the help they needed in time. But why is it that this creature is such a terror? Well, that would be because it's perfectly fine living in the beach areas where people love to swim. Even more so, they have a transparent body which allows them to not be visible either above or below the water unless you're looking right at them. And even then, it's not a guarantee. As such, lifeguards and other officials in Australia near the water have the antivenom on hand in order to cure anyone so that death can be prevented. Number 1. Blue-bellied black snake. And we end things with another snake. Specifically, the blue-bellied black snake. The black snakes in general are known for being incredibly venomous, and this one is no exception. A human, if bitten, may suffer great things like severe pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and a bunch of things that I can't rightly pronounce at the location of the bite, similar to a red-bellied black snake's bite symptoms. The potency of the venom apparently makes it the second most venomous of the black snakes, which is obviously a big deal in terms of wanting to know how dangerous it is. And all that being said, attacks on humans are actually rare, or as some would like to say, infrequent. I'd prefer they were not possible, and thus I wouldn't risk getting too close to the snake. That's all from the realm of dangerous animals from Australia. Were you surprised that the place has so many dangerous and deadly creatures within its borders and waters? And which of them do you personally feel is most dangerous of all? Do you know of any other dangerous Australian animals I missed? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.